check, check, mic check, 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 mic check. <laughs> Welcome to episode 91 of Podcast Envy. I'm your podcast boss, Andrea Klender, and this episode is part two of my Office Hours podcast coaching conversation with Stacey Lampkin and Mike Palazza of Healthcare Behind the Scenes, a brand new podcast coming to you hopefully this fall. If you haven't already, I highly recommend you go back and listen to episode 90 before you listen to this one so that you can hear part one of our conversation, gives you a little bit more background, and we have a great conversation about getting clear about your ideal podcast listener and crafting the exact right intro for your show. And if you already listened to episode 90 or you're feeling like, you know what, I'm here. I'm in episode 91. That's the one I clicked. I'm feeling good about it. I'm going to stay right here and keep listening. Totally great. Happy to have you. And you are going to get a ton out of this half of the coaching session between me and Stacy and Mike. And in fact, since we recorded this a few months ago, I have an update for you from Stacy. Stacy said, after doing our coaching session with you, we decided to release the show in seasons and are currently producing season one. We hope to launch in November or December of 2021. We updated the description a bit after realizing that our target audience isn't necessarily patients or healthcare workers, but anyone who is interested in learning about how our healthcare system needs to change and become more accessible, easier to navigate, affordable, and so much more. What's interesting about this is that Stacy and Mike are approaching their ideal listener not in terms of demographics like men between the ages of 35 to 50 who have a family, professional career, and live in an urban area. Instead, they're looking at it as psychographics, a need and interest-based unifier, people who have a specific need to learn how to navigate and improve the healthcare system. And Stacy also includes their new description for healthcare behind the scenes. Join Stacey Lampkin, pediatric pharmacist and patient advocate, and Mike Palazza, licensed master of social work, as they geek out about what's taking place behind the scenes of our nation's healthcare system. They'll challenge what you think you know by delving into different perspectives, barriers, and real life experiences of patients, healthcare workers, and industry leaders. This podcast is for anyone who is interested in learning about how our healthcare system needs to change and become more accessible, easier to navigate, affordable, and so much more. Fantastic description. It's short. It's very clear about what you can expect. And it has that personality that we discovered in our coaching session together using phrases like geek out and challenge what you think you know. It gives it that personality. And we know that this isn't going to be a dry, technical, academic sort of podcast. But we also know, based on their professional experience and credentials, that it's going to be well-informed and brimming over with solid, actionable information. I love this direction. I love this description. Stacey and Mike, you're doing awesome. I cannot wait till your show comes out. I'm going to be one of your very first downloads. In this episode, we are getting into that very thing I just mentioned, strategies for handling topic-specific jargon and developing the right growth-oriented mindset for your show to allow yourself and your podcast the space to grow and evolve organically. Once again, this is part two of our original coaching conversation, so we are going to jump right into the middle with Stacy's next question. And then I guess my other question, so we we know there's going to be like medical terminology that pops up that we might forget to describe it while we're talking. That is a huge problem, I think, for patients that will quickly lose interest if they're like, I don't even know what that word means. And then you will lose for the rest of the show. So we were debating doing that in the intro. But then as I've been listening actually to some of your podcast episodes, you kind of do that break that maybe we should pause it there and say, in case you don't know what this word means, here's a definition and then go through with it. I think anytime you're in an industry, like how you handle terminology and jargon will depend on, again, who your listener is. So in the document that I created for you, there's two examples that I have here. These are both clients of mine. One is a show called Know Where You Stand, which is in the flooring distribution industry. So we recorded their trailer and their first couple of episodes. And they were like, with the release of our Rain Tree program, it's been super. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell that is. Like, what is Rain Tree program? And so I thought we might need to take this out. And then I was like, wait, 
because their target listener are retailers who already sell their products. And so I was like, do your retailers, if you say Rain Tree program, do they automatically know what that is? They're like, oh yeah, they know what that is. And I was like, cool. Any other listener who stumbles across the flooring industry podcast who doesn't know what Rain Tree is, it doesn't matter because that's not the target listener. So it's fine. They can leave that in there. In that case, that works. Versus the other show that I listed is Transforming Trauma. And Transforming Trauma is a show that is in the mental health world. It's put out by a training center that is training practitioners in this specific therapeutic model. And there is a lot of jargon, especially when they're talking with other practitioners. However, they've been very clear from the beginning that they want the content to be accessible to someone who is not a practitioner. And part of that strategy is because they are opening their trainings up more and more to people who can utilize the model who are not healthcare workers who are not behavioral health workers who are not social workers or therapists. So like they just interviewed somebody who's a lawyer and a law professor who started using this model with her law students and in like negotiating and mediating. And she's not going to know all the jargon, but they still want it to be accessible. So the way that they do that is the host, like if she's interviewing somebody, that is something that is in her mind all the time. If she hears something, then she'll say, oh, for our listeners, can you just break down what that is? If she's talking to somebody who's a professional in the field and she just has to be on top of that. Also, if she misses something and it's key to the conversation, she's going to go back and record an intro for that episode later. So she might make a note of it when she goes back and reviews the transcript and she's like, oh, we didn't really explain this concept. So in the intro, she'll say about halfway through this conversation, we talked about blah, 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 blah. And that is, and she'll explain it in the intro. What you were referring to, Stacey, is something that I started doing in Podcast Envy, which is having these little asides during the course of the episode. So I'll break in with a little sound effect, which is called, depending on how you're using it, it's either a stinger or a bumper (laughs) in audio (laughs) language, but it's just like a little sound effect or a little piece of music that signifies a transition. So we're transitioning out of the interview into me saying something directly to the listener, and then a little transition sound effect back to the conversation. And that way, I could pull out and explain things and give insights to things that maybe didn't make sense to talk about in the flow of the conversation. Or maybe it was something that when I was listening back, I'm like, oh, there's more to be said about this that will be helpful for the listener. And so that's why I started doing that. And that's something you can totally do after the fact if you decide to make that a consistent stylistic choice and just know that's a little bit more work. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> but if it but if it's something that serves your listener, not only is it giving them more information and education and helping them from that perspective, but it also sets your show apart from other shows because the more production value you can put into your show in those simple little ways by adding those little elements that are different than other shows, then it, it further sets your show apart. It's like part of the audio experience and it helps the listener to get to know you a little bit more too, because you're talking directly to them. And this dear listener is an example of what we were just talking about using music or sound effect on the front and back end of a little bit of voiceover narration directed towards the listener to help clarify, explain, or highlight something from the interview or conversation. In this case, it's being used as a bumper because it's taking you out of the conversation, giving you a little something something, and then putting you back into the conversation. A stinger technically sounds very similar and in fact could be the exact same piece of music or clip, but a stinger usually is used to signify the transition from one segment into another. So it is not necessarily on both ends of that transition. Make sense? Now you know. Yeah, we'll definitely have to talk more about that as we go through. But I think it would, as I've been listening to different podcasts, obviously there's a million out there. I'm sure there's one that might be doing something similar, but the ones that are very healthcare technical often just talk through the jargon and, and I think lose people. And then you have the ones that are often, if they're not done by a health professional, that they're done by like patients might not have the healthcare spin that or background that we have. So I feel like we're a little unique already and that we're trying to combine the two. But then I think we've been struggling because we're trying to combine the two sides and kind of meld it into one. So we'll have to think about that more. 
Yeah. And I think when we go back to looking at what I often lump together in the conversation about format, because that's a format choice is what that is, okay. is also your premise. And your premise is something that is a simple one sentence about what the show is about. So it's kind of like the equivalent of like the elevator pitch or whatever, but it's literally usually one sentence. And one way that I've heard it described by somebody else in the podcasting space is that you should be able to say, we're the only show that, and then fill in the blanks of what you are the only show that, we're the only podcast that. And for you, I can see that as a unique value proposition. We're the only show that bridges the conversation between the healthcare professionals or the healthcare industry and the patient. And so, you know, that might not be it, but just off the top of my head that came in something about bridging the gap between those two sides. And then you are aligning all of those decisions about format, about how much jargon to include, what not to include. You're making that around like, does this bridge the gap between the two? And is that bridge clear for someone to cross over? And I think that you'll start out with an intention and a way that you want to handle it in the beginning, and that can evolve over time. All the choices that you make in the beginning, a lot of those are going to change when you're like 5, 10, 15, 50 episodes in, you'll switch it up. You'll find an easier way to do it. You'll find a more effective way to do it. You'll find a more fun way to do it. So your intro might change. Your theme music might change. Your cover art might change. All those things might change how long your episodes are. And so I think it's good to really think these through and have a solid plan for how you're going to handle that and then give yourself space to let it sort of evolve organically because some of those answers will come to you as you're creating it. That's a lot of really good advice. That makes total sense. Yeah, I think when you get very clear as to that key listener, who that is and how you're going to serve them and how you can ride that line between the industry information and the patient side information. I think that's going to be the key for you. That's going to help really position you uniquely and help you make a lot of those format kind of choices. And I think also just like having these questions in your mind and then going to other podcasts, not necessarily even in your industry, maybe in your industry or in your niche, but maybe not, maybe in a different niches and just seeing how they do things, listening to a bunch of shows and all you're listening to is their intro. How do they do their intro? What is their intro? What's the same week to week and what changes week to week? Just listening to the last three minutes of their show. What's the last three minutes of their show? And what do I like about that? What do I not like about that? It's like, you know, when they say when you're shopping for a car and you're like, I'm trying to decide between a Prius and a Tesla. I don't know. It's because I want a Tesla, but I can only afford a Prius. That's why I say that. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it's like suddenly you're driving and all you see are Teslas and Priuses. Right. So it's the same thing when you're thinking about your theme music. Just click through a bunch of shows and be like, oh, I like that music. What do I like about that? Oh, I like that music or like, oh, that music's terrible. I don't like that. And just kind of figure out what your preferences are. That'll be one of our lunch hours is just listen to music. (laughs) Yes, definitely. (laughs) Speaking of resources to help you produce your show and make it oh so much more enjoyable, do you know that I have a whole page on my website of some of my favorite services and software to help improve your podcasting experience? No? Oh my goodness, why haven't I told you about this before? The creativeimposter.com forward slash faves, F-A-V-E-S, is where you can find some of the tools that I use in the craft and culture of my own show and that of my clients. Some of those links are affiliates, which means when you sign up through my direct link or with my promo code, I get a little something something to help promote the work that I'm doing over here at the Creative Imposter Studios. And it's a win, win, win. Everyone's happy. That's what I love the most. Oh, and speaking of everyone winning, if you are super enjoying this coaching session with Stacy and Mike, and you're wondering how you can work with me on crafting a show of significance using a values-based approach, I am currently taking names for people who want to work with me in early 2022. Whether you're hoping to launch a brand new show, start a consulting partnership with me to refresh, revamp, and reinvigorate your existing show, or you want a quick, deep, one hour strategy session like I did with Stacy and Mike, all of these options are available to you. And the best way to get started is to head over to thecreativeimposter.com forward slash save 
my spot. That's the creativeimpostor.com forward slash save my spot. Drop your name and email and I will reach out to you as soon as I have some availability for a complimentary 20 minute podcast tea date. We'll book that time to figure out what your exact next right step is and how I can support you in taking that step. The links to all of my podcasting fave resources and the Creative Imposter Studios waitlist are all conveniently placed in the show notes for this episode in the episode description in your listening app and at thecreativeimpostor.com forward slash pod envy zero nine one for episode 91. I appreciate you. I can't wait to see what you're doing with your show in 2022. Let me know if I can help. So also looking at wanting to, you said, we want our healthcare related podcast to be professional, discuss important topics, be taken seriously, but include our personalities while we challenge the system and provide actionable tips for the daily consumer. We don't want to make it overly serious, hyper-professional and dry, which I think is really smart because it would be very easy to go towards that. And so what I know from this conversation is that your personalities are not that. So the more that you can be yourselves and relax into that personality and almost how you would normally have your conversations over lunch, you're going to immediately not be in that dry, boring healthcare information category. Okay. And then also just always going to stories, always going to stories, always pulling stories out of your guests. That can be a danger when you bring on experts in certain fields or other professionals is they want to provide information, 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 expertise, expertise, expertise. Yeah, that's exactly it. So that'll be a good challenge for you is figuring out how in your interview style you pull stories out of your guests. And, you know, for the patient side guests, I think it'll be easier. Mm -hmm. And I think then what your challenge is, is to take those stories and translate that into those actionable tips and resources for the listener. Like, what are we learning from this story? What are we drawing out of this? Our first episode is wanting to debunk the term patient centered care, because I don't know if you hear it's everywhere. It's online. It's on the radio. It's TV. It's on every pamphlet I've gotten since I've been in school or any training I go to. And people kind of just shout that word out and everyone just says, yeah. And then we just move forward. And I'm like, <laughs> I was talking to Stacey about it. And I was like, you know what really irks me? I was just like, I have no idea what this term even means. And I've literally probably used it in my graduation speech <laughs> for grad school. <laughs> and people are just like, wow, this guy gets it. You know, yeah. and then it's just like, I think that we've gotten into a culture that has gotten very much into let's promote buzzwords and not really understand the depth behind some of the words that we use because language is really important I even talk about like when I worked at the YMCA for five years and we always talked about whenever you're having to tell a story talk to a parent you have to use the sandwich method you know (laughs) Um, where it was like you know Billy had like a really good morning and then he had like a tough day at the playground but then like he picked it up at the end and like made sure that he had a much better day and so it's kind of like with the podcast too like you start off with something positive and like welcoming to get people engaged and then you bring up a more difficult area that we're trying to improve or bring light upon and then finish it always with how we can make things better is how we are kind of formatting the podcast. And like, we'll include either a story that we've experienced personally or just seen in the field in general or our research, et cetera. And so that's kind of how we plan on breaking down Mm -hmm. our episodes. Stacey, I mean, you can obviously elaborate if you think. No, I think that covered most of it. And then just with the patient centered care example, because tying in the patient side too is what does that mean if you see that as a patient? Some patients are like, oh, look, it's a patient-centered care. Like they're number one in patient-centered care, but like that doesn't necessarily mean anything. So if you're looking at, should you go to that provider, give some tips in terms of that's not the buzzword you're looking for. Yeah. And I think then you've got that right on. Like you have that personal relationship, the relatability, the stories. And so anytime that you're giving information or advice about something that you're also relating it back to an anecdote, a story, a funny comment, a contrarian comment, you know, so I think you have that down and you'll find your rhythm and your flow as you record. And as you edit, I heard you say something about dabbling with editing. 
Yeah, so we've tried to just do like an intro episode. We've recorded a couple of times, just like what is the, how did we meet and like why we started the podcast and then yeah. editing, we started using Descript. I know you answered some questions okay. for me with that. Yeah, so that's kind of where we're at, but we've recorded like 18 times because every time we listen to it, we're like... We always are like, and Stacey and I are the type of people too, we're like, oh no, we could just do that a little bit differently. And so eventually we're going to just like leave it and have yeah. an episode but what we were doing at first is we had a longer episode and it flowed really well but it was just too long and we started rambling and so then we're like no let's just be a little bit more off the cuff and so it was good like because we have really good conversations during our lunch hours and we even have different people sit in on it and they're like you guys like have great conversations we laugh a lot but like they kind of jump all over the place so like they're great but they're sporadic <laughs> at times so then we kind of had that with the last intro episode we had where it was very much like okay these are our talks and then all of a sudden it was like what were we saying yeah, we ended up points? talking about personality types and so now we kind of have an idea of how long we want it to be and we've kind of worked out that balance so i think our next time we're going to record is probably going to be our best one because we've gotten a lot more comfortable with recording and now we have a good idea of the length that we want for this intro episode and what we want to talk about yeah and i think you know it is interesting to try to find that that right balance both for you and for your listener yes you know like keeping both in mind because you don't want it to be so structured and rigid that you can't have those fun moments and those points of connection and then you also don't want it to be so rambling and like just the two of you talking that the listeners like wait what are they talking like i thought i was listening to an episode about blah 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 so i think it's just a matter of playing and having in mind what you're going to do and play with having more structure and play with having less structure and just see what your natural flow is and sometimes you might record something and then you might decide not to use it and that's fine too or you might record something and then you might decide to edit it a little bit more. So I I know in my process, if I am scripting less, I know that I'll be editing more. If I'm okay. scripting more, I know that it will allow me to edit less. So either way, I'm going to spend time on the episode. It's just, am I spending time on the prep side or am I spending time on the editing side? That makes sense. Yep. Any other burning questions that you want to make sure that we cover really quickly? I think you reaffirmed that we're on the right track, but there's definitely a few more things that we should probably work out. And I think because we had a few obviously different <laughs> perspectives, I wanted to gear towards patients and apparently Mike wanted healthcare workers. <laughs> oh, geez. I mean, I, know. I think like, it was just like, no, like in that exact moment when like just, you asked that question, I just was like, oh, like I thought of a healthcare worker. But we do really want to bridge the gap, which I think is what we've been struggling with is kind of that yes. we, we want to kind of hit both because there's a huge disconnect and we want to bridge that gap like you had mentioned earlier. So I think just having talked that through is really helpful. Yeah, you definitely have already done a lot of preparation, I can tell, and have thought through a lot of these things. And so it's just a little bit more nuanced. And then the trick is to know when you have thought enough about it and experimented enough And it is time to say yes, because there's the coaching camp that says, just do it. Just start before you're ready. Just record something and put it out there. Don't overthink it. And I think no. Incorrect. (laughs) 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 Please, please think about what you're doing before you just put it out there. Yeah. And then there's the other side of things. And I tend to be very perfectionist about things. And I, I want things to be right from the beginning. And I want them to be the best that they can be. And if I listen back to a recording and I'm like, oh, I should have said, or that inflection wasn't right, or I should have said this like this, or oh, I sound sleepy, or oh, my voice sounds a little bit not as good as it could have been. I was tired when I recorded that. At some point, you do also just need to let those things go and know that like the amount of improvement that you are going to put into that doesn't actually yield any better result than what you've already created. (laughs) Yeah, I think we're on that later side too. (laughs) A little bit more of... (laughs) We need to get this like perfect. Yes. I don't know any podcaster who has gotten past episode 50 who has looked back at episode one and been like, man, episode one was amazing. I can't believe how good I was immediately (laughs) when I started. Like literally, I know no one who has said that. Fair enough. But yeah, I think you're making a lot of really good decisions. You're thinking about the right things and you're probably pretty close to being ready in terms of like the format, the premise, the concept, the structure and all of that. And so then it will just be going into like the nuts and bolts as to how to actually get your hosting set up and get the files uploaded, making sure that cover art is ready and all those 
little pieces, but you're, you're doing the hard part right now, the more interesting part, but the hard part, and then it'll just be the nuts and bolts of, of getting the release out there. And then, like I said, you will grow and improve and, and change and change and change. And the alternative is, you know, to not go beyond like episode eight. If you're not willing to go on that growth and change and evolve with how things are, you're going to give up because it's just not going to be as rewarding. Like, and that's the whole premise mm-hmm. of your show that you were talking about too, is being willing to improve and change and grow. And I think that fits into the entire ethos of what you're creating. So, you know, enjoy it and keep in mind what that purpose is, what that mission, that driving yeah. force is and have realistic expectations too. And that's the other like general launch thing that I like to say is podcasting is extremely effective as a medium for a lot of different things. It is not fast. It is not a fast medium. (laughs) And so you will grow your listener base. You will find an audience and it might be slow. I think both of us are okay with that in terms of if we have one listener and we're making an impact, like it's worth it. Yep. Yeah. As long as we're still enjoying it. Yeah. There's been a lot of discussion that we've had and a lot of takeaways and a lot of thinking about things in certain ways. What is one thing right now in your mind that is a next thing that you know you want to do, Stacey? I was going to say Mike has a lot of editing to do. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to choose oh for your gosh, co-host. There we go. Just put it right on me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think the probably first would be to really reevaluate kind of how we're going to bridge that gap. So have a little Uh bit more discussion in terms of how are we pulling the two audiences together to have a show that provides value to uh, the patient and the provider so they can see the the connections. And I know it's not going to be perfect and it's hard to tailor two separate audiences, but there's such a huge divide. So I think we want to talk more about that. And I think your key in that is not thinking of them as two separate audiences, but thinking of where that overlaps. Like what you said about the provider is also a patient. That's a good point. Yeah. The one person who is both, you know, and what is that context like? Because you'll accidentally serve the audience that is not both by focusing on the one that is both, if that makes sense. Yes. That's why I was just thinking about. Uh, you literally I took what I was like thinking and said out loud. I was just like, when I'm thinking about the ideal person, it's that audience member that is both a patient and a healthcare worker and like how they're wanting to listen to this because it like encompasses so much of what they're wanting to like do in their daily lives and how we can really provide a podcast that serves mm-hmm. what they're wanting to get out of it. Mike, other than editing, what is the one thing that you know that you want to do after this? I want to like figure out our music because I thought it was very entertaining for the small portion that we were able to do today. And so being able to get some more of the creative aspects done is what I'm excited about. So music and creative and clarifying that key audience listener who is going to help you bridge the gap between practitioners and patients. Yes. Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. Is there anything else that you want to say or that you want to share? No, I mean, I could keep talking to you for hours. So right. you yeah, I was gonna say, I'll keep we thinking could, we of things. Keep, I was going, we could keep talking. I know, this is my problem. Like I start talking about podcasting and I like can't stop. Podcast Envy is produced by your podcast boss, Andrea Klunder. That's me. The Podcast Envy theme music is by Valentin Sosnitsky, courtesy of the Free Sound Project at freesound.org, and our podcast angel music is by Benjamin Masterpolito, also on freesound.org, as Lemon Cream. All music is licensed under the Creative Commons. Our episodes are mixed by Edwin Ruiz, and hey, if you want your show to sound as good as ours, hire us. Put the magic audio mojo of the Creative Imposter Studios to work for you. Thanks so much for listening, and here's to making your podcast the envy of everyone else.